Hello. Today I'll begin with the remarkable story of Asher Levi. Asher Levi, also known as Asher Levi von Svelem and Asher Levi, was a Jewish refugee from Hesife Brasil and was one of the first settlers in the Dutch colony of New Amsterdam on Manhattan Island. Levi's story is an inspiring one. He was a man of great determination and courage, and it, he seems he faced uh, and overcame quite a few odds in his life. Levi arrived in New Amsterdam in 1654, being one of the first known Jewish inhabitants of this very young colony. He was a successful businessman who primarily traded in hides and skins, and was a highly respected member of this small community. Levy also was the first Jewish refugee to serve in the colonial militia. This was a major milestone, and it set a precedent that would be protected by others in the area. In addition to his business and militia service, Levy was also a vocal advocate for the rights of minority residents in New Amsterdam. He petitioned the Dutch West India Company for the right of persecuted minorities to own land which was eventually granted in 1655. The legacy of Asher Levy has continued to this day. He'll be remembered as an early champion of rights and a pioneer of religious freedom in America. Thank you for joining me as I told the story of Asher Levy. I'm Mitchell Harrison, and I hope you found this tale as inspiring as I did. Hey everyone, Mitchell Harrison here again to discuss a little more backstory about the early settlement of New Amsterdam. In our past video, we briefly discussed some of what little is known about the life of Asher Levy. Now, some more details about the short-lived Dutch settlement in northeast Brazil. The Dutch sojourn in the area lasted around a quarter century. The Portuguese reconquered the area and reimposed the totalitarian and repressive Portuguese Inquisition. They once again seized the property of persecuted and oppressed minorities without any form of compensation. This is a recurring theme where history sadly keeps repeating itself. The Dutch Republic established a number of colonies and trading posts in various parts of the world during the 17th century, including in Brazil. The Dutch West India Company founded the colony of New Holland in northeast Brazil in 1630, and it remained under Dutch control until 1654, when it was permanently reconquered by the Portuguese. During their time in Brazil, the Dutch established a thriving sugar industry and many refugees fled to the colony to escape persecution in Europe. Among these refugees was Asher Levy, who later went on to play a prominent role in the early settlement of New Amsterdam. They became refugees yet again. Interestingly, one of the ships heading back to the Netherlands was blown off course, captured by pirates, and detained on the western tip of Cuba. More details on that in an upcoming video. Unfortunately, the Dutch presence in Brazil was ultimately short-lived as the Portuguese were able to regain control of the territory and reimpose their own regime, including the dreaded Inquisition. This led to the persecution and seizure of property from many of the minority groups who had sought refuge in the Dutch colony. Overall, the history of the Dutch settlement in Brazil highlights the challenges faced during this time period, as well as the complex geopolitical relationships that shaped the early modern world. Thank you for taking a moment to learn a little about the ephemeral Dutch period in Brazil. Please comment away and add any suggestions. Ciao for now. Mitchell Harrison, back again to describe that ship that was sailing from Hesifa Brasil, the Valk. Last video we discussed the Portuguese reconquest of that northeast coast of Brasil from the relatively more tolerant Dutch. The result, after 1654, was a refugee crisis, with a caravan of at least 16 boats barely handling the desperate stream of human beings back to the Netherlands or anywhere they could escape with their lives. The Sephardim present, who managed to practice their faith freely and openly in Brazil, viscerally feared being burnt alive at the stake in a grand public auto da fé, act of faith by the hyper-vigilant forces of the Inquisition. Today we discuss a peculiar vessel, the old boat Valk. Valk had the mazel of being blown off course to Jamaica and or Cuba. The arrival in New York, then New Amsterdam, was almost never to be. The ship was blown off course by a pretty fierce storm. NOAA National Hurricane Center warnings, GPS, and satellite imagery were not available, not even in beta testing. According to the account by Saul Levy Morteda and David Franco Mendes, the boat was overpowered, and people were held captive. They were then taken by Spanish pirates for a time, detained a month under primitive conditions on the western tip of Cuba, Cabo San Antonio. In Cuba, the Jews eventually boarded the St. Katrina called by later historians the Jewish Mayflower, which took them to New Amsterdam. The St. Katrina barely made it north to the next small island of Dutch civilization in the Northern Hemisphere, the island of Manahata in Lenape, Manhattan, 
Once the boat arrived, the infamous governor Peter Stuyvesant did not even want to accept the wretched two dozen tormented humans, the Sephardim aboard. After such a harrowing experience, the people from this one boat remained in legal limbo, and months went by in a demeaning form of purgatory without any rights or ability to immerse in a local society. There had to be a prolonged appeal which involved waiting for boats with messages to go back and forth to the Netherlands and North America to finally receive a favorable decision allowing tolerance to the newly arrived humans in town. It helped that some of the shareholders of the Dutch West India Company were favorably disposed, and blind exclusion was bad for business. Also, the ship's captain wanted money. He ransomed all the possessions of the refugees aboard and held all the people collectively responsible for alleged arrears for their passage, legally bound in solidum. 900-odd guilders already paid, an exorbitant 2,500 guilders alleged by the captain. The judge in New Amsterdam decides all of the predatory 2,500 guilders must be coughed up and allows the captain to hold all their stuff. The judge forced everyone to pay up the extra charges within 48 hours. It is not just modern coyotes that exploited those desperate migrants who did not have much choice in the matter and got away with it. There is also the auspicious timing that just one month before the Sephardic refugees arrived in September 1654, the boat Pedaboom arrived in New Amsterdam with several visiting Ashkenazic traders who advocated towards easing the plight of the refugees. Truly an interesting moment in history. I always find it so remarkable how chance events such as a storm and capture by pirates can have such profound effects on history. If the ship had not been blown off course, or if it had been accepted at, at its intended destination without incident, the very course of Jewish history in the United States might have been entirely different. The difficult circumstances under which the refugees arrived in New Amsterdam is a reminder of the challenges faced by persecuted minorities in seeking safety and a new home. However unfortunate and humiliating, subjected to such mistreatment by the captain and the governor, their determination and resilience in overcoming these obstacles is a testament to the strength of the human spirit. Despite the rocky start, the Jewish community in New Amsterdam, which later became New York City, went on to become one of the most prominent and influential in the world. It is a reminder of the important role that refugees and immigrants have played in shaping the history and culture of the United States and other countries around the world.